Hi, this is part two of uh, Fluke TI25 thermal imager review, and uh, let's look. Let's take a look at the menu. So the center key is the power button. If you hold it uh, for several seconds, it'll turn on and off. And if you just tap it once, you get into the menus. So um, uh, let's go into IR Fusion, and uh, uh, let's pick uh, uh, picture in picture with 50% uh, opacity. So done. And uh, uh, let's take a look at our at our object here. Sorry, it's kind of hard for me to get the focus right. So that's our little board. And uh, you can see IR view in the center, and you see visible light. And you can actually take a picture just like that, and it'll save. Uh, two separate images that you can later view and combine and uh, look at in your software. So this uh, this allows you to um, identify complex uh, shaped uh, objects. Um, if you're in an industrial environment, you have a bunch of pipes intertwined, and uh, you want to um, see the temperatures of a partic one particular one. Um, you will have uh, many many sources of radiation, so it'll be hard to tell what you're looking at. But with IR fusion, you can easily tell exactly what uh, you know what the temperatures of uh, the particular of your target so um, you can do 50% opacity you can do picture in picture um, and so on so let's uh, again this is a quick review so if you want a more in-depth review uh, <laughs> uh, <laughs> I uh, recommend you contact the manufacturer or uh, go through the manual so you can download from the website so um, pellets uh, what pellet is? It, it's it's a basically it's a map between temperatures and colors. So um, the maps uh, this this palette will allow you to easier identify and troubleshoot uh, temperatures of different objects uh, and or different systems um, because they create a contrast between different temperature ranges. Okay, just a sec. All right, phone ring. Uh, uh, where we were at? Uh, we were at uh, picture in picture and and uh, palette. So, uh, so this this imager has uh, several uh, palettes built in. Uh, let's see what we have here. Sorry about that. All right. So uh, let's go back to specs quickly. So recording is, as I mentioned, uh, 60 seconds uh, voice recording. Um, uh, the SD memory card, 2 gigs that comes included, uh, can um, uh, fit uh, 1,200 fully radiometric images, like I said, where every pixel contains uh, temperature measurement, and uh, 3,000 bitmap images. Uh, this is the format that you can save, as I mentioned in the software. Uh, Let's see what else we got here. Oh, uh, forgot to tell you. Uh, language is the menu. Actually, you can switch language, and you can have Czech, English, Finnish, French, German, Italian, uh, Japanese, Korean, Polish, Portuguese, Russian, simplified Chinese, Spanish, Swedish, traditional Chinese, and Turkish. So um, it's uh, all all. Um, all menus are fully uh, fully customized uh, into different languages. Uh, lots of different certifications, dimensions, uh, weight. Uh, weight is uh, 1.2 kilograms or 2.65 pounds. So it's it's a little bit heavy, but uh, not too much. Uh, I, I I can see myself walking around with it all day and not having any uh, fatigue in my wrist or my hands. Uh, sleep mode: five activated, five minutes after of inactivity. Automatic power off 20 minutes. Uh, battery is, uh, as I mentioned, it's a uh, AA uh, nickel metal hydride. And uh, I was very, um, was very uh, uh, eager to uh, swap it out for Sanyo Ana Loops, uh, but it's a bad idea. And the reason why, because the charger charges it uh, at very high current, which is uh, which will basically uh, might damage your, uh, uh, depending on what charge circuitry is inside the. Um, inside the, um, the camera, 
uh, you might damage your charge circuit because uh, Sanyos are not designed to be charged with high currents. Uh, normally they're like um, 12 hour charge time. Mm, this thing charges built in uh, the built in uh, nickel metal hydrides in I believe an hour or two hours. Uh, I haven't, don't remember. So uh, this is a great tool um, if you again if you're doing electrical inspections, mechanical inspections. You can see your overheating motors, generators, ball bearings, uh, buses, cables. Um, uh, one interesting thing about this is uh, glass is actually opaque to infrared light. Uh, this lens is, uh, I believe, made of uh, zinc selenide, not 100% because uh, they're made out of, uh, uh, they can be made out of germanium or can be made out of um, uh, silicone and so on. So, uh, but uh, as you can see, you can't really you can't really see elements inside because the infrared lens is actually opaque to visible light. So that's one interesting fact. So again, um, if you're doing any type of uh, maintenance um, uh, for building maintenance for uh, uh, building envelope inspections, uh, you need to get TI32. It has higher sensitivity, under 50 millikelvin. Um, this is typically recommended sensitivity for uh, building inspections, uh, roofing inspections, and so on. Um, this is, as I mentioned, uh, more uh, uh, mechanical, industrial, electrical type um, diagnostic tool. Uh, TI-32 is the next model up. Of course, TI-32 will do pretty much everything that TI-25 does. Um, each one is, has its own applications and its own, uh, its own uses. Of course, there is a price difference. Um, you know, the big question is uh, how much this thing is. A uh, typical base price uh, as of 2011 here in Canada is about $9,500. So uh, in Europe it can go up to 15,000 US dollars, depending on where you buy it from. So, but uh, it doesn't matter how much it is. Um, this thing will pay for itself in no time. Um, you know, if you're working for a uh, power generating station and uh, you have a turbine fail uh, because of uh, some uh, damage in ball bearings and so on the cost uh, of uh, losing production uh, is much much higher than buying one of those so I highly recommend this to um, uh, highly recommend this product um, this of course this is not a toy and this is not uh, something that uh, you know a, a hobbyist would use but uh, if you can buy a used one or uh, buy a lower resolution or different manufacturers, uh, FLIR makes uh, those cameras as well. Um, but uh, I prefer Fluke. Um, the, it, you get better bang for the buck. You get more features, higher resolution for the same amount of money. Um, last time I checked, I don't know if it's changed recently, but uh, I find that, that Fluke is cheaper and has uh, provides more features uh, when it comes to uh, thermal imagers compared to FLIR. Um, um, that's pretty much it. So uh, uh, I'm sorry that review is kind of really quick. Um, uh, this is actually uh, I'm selling this, uh, and I'm going to be getting a higher uh, resolution and uh, more sen a higher sensitivity camera in the future. Um, I have to ship this off today, so that's uh, that's why I'm doing last minute quick review. Uh, but uh, yeah, I'm going to miss this guy. This is a great tool. Um, I've been using it for uh, troubleshooting electronics and batteries and so on, power supplies. Uh, it served me well. So uh, if you can get one for your lab or get a simpler model, uh, highly recommend it. If you're working uh, um, uh, at uh, some kind of industrial setting and uh, you need a troubleshooting tool for uh, mechanical electrical systems, uh, TI-25 is the way to go. So and that was uh, quick and a uh, crappy review of <laughs> uh, Fluke TI-25 but uh, uh, you should check out the Fluke website and read the, the specs and uh, application notes uh, regarding this uh, thermal imager. Uh, it is really a great and wonderful tool. Um, uh, I cannot describe uh, how many 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 applications it has. Uh, I've used this TI-25 is not as I mentioned it's not really designed for building uh, building inspection but I've successfully used it used it to find uh, uh, water leaks inside um, uh, residential complexes uh, like pipes leaking and uh, water pooling on top of the drywall in the ceiling and uh, this thing will actually show uh, blue spots 
uh, like dark spots on the ceiling and that's because uh, the water will evaporate from the point uh, from the pool and uh, evaporative cooling will lower the temperature of the drywall and uh, that will uh, show up on the thermal imager. Uh, because TI-32 has a uh, higher sensitivity, it'll be more defined. Uh, with TI-25, you'll just see a, a bluish uh, blob on the black, uh, or sorry, black blob on the on the bluish picture. Uh, with TI-32, you'll see a sh more sharper image. So uh, that's it. That's the uh, TI-25 thermal imager.